so much, sir, for devoting your precious time and endowing us with your words of wisdom. Professor Mohanta highlighted on the increase in the crime against women in Assam and given a comprehensive picture of the same with the district wise data. He also highlighted on the role of fast track codes and how we can go beyond the fast track codes. It was indeed a pleasure listening to you, sir, and thank you so much for giving your insight, valuable insights on the theme. Now, I would like to request the keynote speaker for today's seminar. Srimati Rumi Kumari Fukon to deliver the keynote address. And we look forward to get an exposure about this very dynamic issue on class records. Hey, good morning to all of you here. So perhaps it is very difficult to speak after a good speaker concluded. Uh, but I am not so acquainted with so giving deliberation. But in, in a court, we generally used to listen and to write through the pain. But the uh, occasion to speak is few to judges. Anyhow, uh, I, I am happy to attend the seminar with a very relevant topics organized by this university. So, respected by Senselor Arpidas, Krishna Kanta Handi. Institute, uh, State Open University, respected director in search, Manikantor Kakoti, Dr. Bachandi Das, Professor Nani Gopal Mohanto, Education Advisor, Government of Assam, Orubzuti Sonthori, Register, KK Handik University, Osim Somwa, <coughs> High Court, Guwahati High Court, advocate from the Guwahati High Court present here, officers from the special branch, and other dignitaries on the days and of the days, and the participant in the case. I sincerely appreciate the effort of Manikanta Research Institute for choosing very crucial topics, the role of first effort in delivery of justice to women for deliveries. As we all know that women in our country having an exalted position in our society, crime and violence against them is increasing day by day. Atrocities in the women, on the women and girls is so rampant in India that the laws enacted to counter such behavior has been rendered toothless. Many a time, crime against women and girls remain unreported and victims suffer in silence. Some of causes for violence against women in the state of Assam include population explosion, immigration, illiteracy, unequal power equation between men and women, social norms, use of internet, unemployment, economic dependence of women, alcohol consumption, etc. etc. In the words of Kofi Annan, former Union Secretary General, Violence against women is perhaps the most sinful rights violation, human rights violation, and it perhaps the most pervasive. It knows no boundaries of geography, culture, or wealth. As long as it continues, we cannot claim to be making real progress towards equality, development, and peace. The idea of <coughs> Establishing the first record in, in, in India was conceived in 2000 by 11th Finance Commission to give speedy justice to victims of sexual offence. With this objective in mind, the Union Government has been taking steps for setting up 1,023 first record special courts, including 389 exclusive POSCO courts across the country for expeditious trial of cases pertaining to sexual offences. As per the data published by the Department of Justice as on June 2022, 720 first special courts, including 408 exclusive POXO courts, are functioning in 28 states, Indian territories, which disposed of more than 1 lakh 2,000 cases, pending cases. Insofar as the Assam state is concerned, the first court are being set up 
in every district except newly created ones. According to the National Data Grid, 29,374 cases tribal by court association, inclusive of cases tribal by the first step courts are pending in the pending for disposal in Assam. As on August 2022, 5,427 cases relating to the offense of rape under Section 376 and 6,677 cases relating to the offenses under Proxy Act are pending in our state. The memo financing indicates that a crime against women and girls, children has <coughs> increased many fold. Against the rate of conviction of culprits <coughs> is very minimal. The reasons for such dismal conviction really are many which can be summarized as under. Forty investigation by the police. Disregard of rules and improper and scientific method of evidence collection, dirt of modern and well equipped forensic lab, shortfall in well trained investigating officers in the police department, lack of well trained, knowledgeable, and competent public prosecutors, lack of coordination between the police and public prosecutors, delay in filing the FIRE, delay in investigation, and filing of searching by the police. Prime witness standing hostile during the trial. Victim detecting from her statement during the trial. This is the reason for <coughs> lower conviction in our state as we have uh, collected from the data that, that is always under research and scrutiny in the High Court. I want to inform here that in the High Court there is a Zonal Justice Committee who took over all the cases from the different district and always uh, overview over the tendency of cases and to issue necessary direction in this regard as to how to equate the case distribution and the result of the all the cases in proper manner. <coughs> the aforesaid factors that, uh, that I have mentioned play a pivotal role and tilt the trial in favor of culprits leading to their acquittal. Needless to mention that fear of punishment acts as a deterrence in the society. However, due to frequent acquittals by the courts, it is obvious that fear of law is diminishing and conflicts are able than ever to commit heinous crime against women and girls and children. Many times we find that police officers being busy in law and order duty and other VIP and VIP security which leaves the officers with little time to focus on investigation of critical and heinous crimes like rape, murder, etc., which weakens the case and eventually leads to acquittal in the court. In order to make the police department free from political and executive interference and to make it more effective and efficient and to strengthen the presence of, strengthen the process, process of rule of law, the Supreme Court in the way back in 2006 by its judgment in case of Prakash Singh versus Union of India 2006 8 SCC held that investigating officer, investigating police must be separated from the law and order police to ensure speedier investigation, better expertise and improve report to the people. How, how? It is unfortunate that enforcement direction has not been complied by the state till now in its true spirit. Given the state rise in crime against women and children, it is imperative that the state government should take active steps to create separate wing in police department to investigate such crime with utmost diligence. It may not be out of place to mention here that domestic or forensic evidence is very crucial in a trial of sexual offence. Therefore, persons manning such separate wing must be competent to collect such evidence. It is also incumbent upon the state to establish modern state art forensic laboratory in every district of Assam so that investigation is not delayed and the police are able to file as such as expeditiously. Insofar as the performance of the first state court is concerned, it is often said that first state court are not so fast 
it may be noted that in most of the courts, pendency is very high and the procedure governing the trustee court and regular court are same. Another reason for delaying trial is adjournment due to absence of witness in the court or adjournment sought by the lawyer. Mass time is also spent in the High Court and the Supreme Court when the order of First State Court is silenced in the in such higher court. So far as the role of First State Court is concerned, that such FTC is to ensure that survivors can rely on their impartiality and neutrality at every stage in a criminal proceeding. The First State Court must ensure speedy and effective dispensation of justice. This such type of courts must not ensure speedy justice but also sensitive handling of such cases and prevent re victimization of sexual assault survivor. The judges are required to identify gender stereotyping and to avoid use of reasoning language which demolishes the demonize the office and trivializing the survivor. At this answer, I think it fit to reproduce the extract from the Bangalore Principle of Judicial Conduct 2002, which provides as an is thus shall not knowingly while proceeding is before or or could came before make any comment that might reasonably be expected to affect the outcome of such proceeding or impair the manifest fairness of the process nor does us shall make any comment in public or otherwise that might affect the fair trial of any person or the issue. A very important judgment of the Supreme Court in this context is Aparna Bhat versus State of Maharashtra, State of Madhya Pradesh, 2021 SCC 230. The Honorable Supreme Court has given certain <coughs> guidelines to the courts dealing with the sexual offenses. So yeah, let me repeat the same. for the benefit of the participant in the seminar in understanding the role of FCS. <coughs> Firstly, the bail position should not mandate or permit contact between the accused and the victim. Such conditions should seek to protect the complainant from any further harassment by the accused. Secondly, the circumstances, where the circumstances exist for the court to believe that there might be a potential threat of harassment of the victim or upon apprehension expressed after calling a report from the police, the nature of protection shall be separately considered and the appropriate order be made in addition to direction to the accused not to make any contact with the victim. In all the cases where bail is granted, complainants should immediately be informed that the accused will be granted bail and a copy of bail order be made over to him within two days. Bail conditions and orders <coughs> should avoid reflecting stereotypical and patricial notions about women and their place in society and must strictly be in accordance with the requirement of the CRPC. In other words, discussion about the dress, behavior or past conduct or morals of the prosecutors should not enter in the verdict <coughs> in granting bail. Next. The court while adjudicating cases involving gender-related crimes should not suggest or entertain any notions or encourage any steps towards compromises between the prosecutors and the accused to get married, suggest or mandate mediation between the accused and the survivor or any of compromise, any form of compromise as it is beyond their power and jurisdiction. Next, sensitivity, sensitivity should be displayed in all times of judge, all the times by the judges, who should ensure that there is no traumatization of the prosecutors during the proceeding or anything that say during that argument. Judges should specially not to use any words spoken or written that would undermine or shake the confidence of the survivor in the fairness or impartiality of the court. To tackle all this situation, the Supreme Court 
has given um, various direction time by uh, time to time so that the court can adjudicate the uh, case such cases properly because no such specific guideline uh, or rule has been embodied in the legislature till now. Criminal Law Amendment Act 2018 brought about several amendments in the in the in IPC with the insertion of 376AB, 376DA, 376DB along with amendment by inserting 166A of section and section 228A of the IPC. Punishment for providing life imprisonment, this means imprisonment for remainder of a person's natural life and they can penalty also provided in the newly amended IPC. Similarly, amendment of code of criminal procedure has been provided for recording statement of victims of sexual assault and investigation of such cases by women police officer, utmost medical attention to the victims, immediate recording of statement of victims under section 164 CRPC, special procedure for recording statement of physically and mentally sentenced victim by audiovisual electronic means. <coughs> And trial of such um, cases should be tried by women judicial officer. And duty of the court to awarding compensation to the victim, etc. <coughs> Amendment was also brought in section 173 CRPC, which provides that investigation the effort of appropriate offenses of the IPC shall be completed within two months. By criminal law amendment 2013 and 18 respectively, it was provided the trial of such cases uh, so far as possible be completed within a period of two months from the date of filing the search sheet. In section 374, CRPC, after section, subsection 3 and 4 has been added, it is where it, where it is provided that the appeal in such cases shall be disposed within a period of six months from the date of filing the appeal. Changes are also secured in the provisions relating to 1438 and 439 respectively. Similarly, the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act mandates that investigation of such cases are to be completed within two months and trial to be completed within six months. The special POXO courts, which also vested with magistrate powers, <coughs> should accept the report in final form submitted at the end of investigation only after proper application of mine and after ensuring that no culprit has been left unscattered. If need be, the special proxco court can also direct further investigation under section 173A of CRPC. <coughs> and the court can monitor the investigation in exercise of power under section 3 CRPC and ensure fair and speedy investigation. Along with speedy trial, the first step court should also render justice in a sensitive and victim friendly manner. The box code remains contains provisions for recording statements and depositions victims in a child friendly and comfortable environment. In a recent decision, now Supreme Court in Simoti Tukaram Srimurti Dhawan Tukaram Bharati vs. State of Maharashtra and another 2022 Life Law SCFT directed the recording of evidence of vulnerable witnesses in vulnerable witness deposition center. The victims of sexual assault including victims of rape, POXO Act, <coughs> Section 354, 377 IPC falls in the category of vulnerable witnesses. The first step special courts must ensure that evidence of vulnerable witnesses are recorded in such vulnerable witness deposition centers so that the witness can depose in a comfortable manner, free from all fear, free from the accused, who will be connected by the remote audiovisual linkage, <coughs> and the victim cannot see the accused at any time of de deposing as a witness. In order to ensure expeditious disposal of cases, the Supreme Court in the state of Kerala Passage received 2018 SCC online held that certain pra practice guidelines are to be followed by the trial court, which include 
detail case calendar must be prepared. At the commencement of the trial, the specified dates on which examination of sick and cross examination will be conducted. Testing of witnesses deposing on the same subject matter must be approximately scheduled. Request for deferral must be preferably made before preparation of the calendar. Next, grant of request to be promised on sufficient reasons and the date of cross examination after deferral so specified. Case calendar to be followed strictly and the witness to be safe guarded. The above guidelines may be religiously adopted by the by such fast tech special courts in order to ensure expeditious disposal of sexual offences against women. The role of fast tech court now not only confined to the trial of cases but also to ensure that the victims are compensated and rehabilitated. <coughs> in this regard, we can refer the various provisions that has been incorporated in the CRPC like T57A, T57B <coughs> and T57C CRPC which provides for rehabilitative compensation to the victims. First aid or needed medical treatment free of cost to the survivors of sexual assault cases including rape etc. These are the mandate of the law then it is to be followed by the IP court in true spirit. <coughs> Further, National Legal Service Authority formulated a compensation scheme detailed as below to be provided to those uh, victims. Uh, I can summarize here. For the gang rape, <coughs> compensation can be granted minimum 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs. For rape, minimum 4 lakhs to 7 lakhs. For grievous physical injury or mental injury requiring rehabilitation, it is up to 2 lakhs from 1 lakhs. Then, victim of acid attack, in case of disfigurement of face, Compensation would be 7 lakhs to 8 lakhs. In case of any in more injury, 5 lakhs to 8 lakhs. Then again, the simple injury, it is uh, simple injury that is uh, less than 50 percent. Uh, it will be around 3 lakhs to 5 lakhs. In case of injury less than 20 percent, it will be 3 lakhs to 4 lakhs. These are the beneficial provision has been made in the, under the law so that the victim can be compensated in real sense whenever um, it is necessary to provide. And the court, um, as, is, as is another regular court, the court has to comply with these provisions. And this is the difference some, somewhere, somewhere, some difference between the trial general court and the uh, first court. Because in case we have found, even in the victim reported that uh, one has been assaulted, severely assaulted and need medical treatment, the court without waiting for any report can direct for compensation to direct the authority district government to provide such adequate compensation within 15 days. That is also provided. But all are actually not in legislation now in the shape of guidelines from the Supreme Court. So if the appropriate law is now is to be formulated in course of time perhaps. No discussion of role of first special court would be complete unless reference is made to the duty of such courts in achieving coordination with other related functionaries like Child Welfare Committee, Special Juvenile Police Unit, District Child Protection Officer, Support Person, District Legal Service Authority. The first court, special court can also take support and assistance from various agencies by recording evidence of victims of sexual offenses, providing them with legal assistance, counseling, medical treatment, awarding compensation, providing protection from treats, harassment and creating awareness about the offenses against women. <coughs> Such integrated effort will enable the first court in general injustice 
to the owner. Last but not the least, <coughs> the legislature must endeavor to reform the existing procedure to bring the new procedure to the first court in the line of Western countries to ensure that in cases relating to crimes against women, girls and children, hearing take place in a time-bound manner and the same are disposed within a stipulated time so that very purpose of establishing fast track courts are not defeated. With these words, I conclude my duty and thanking you all. Thank you so much, ma'am, for giving your valuable practical insights on the theme and you enlightened us with the scenario of the crime against women and you highlighted also the scenario of the fast track courts. Uh, all the valuable insights provided by you gave us a perspective that one should adopt while discussing these issues in the technical sessions and on in the for in the near future. Thank you so much. May I now request our Honorable Vice Chancellor and the President of the seminar, Professor Rajendra Prasad Das, to kindly deliver the presidential address. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Namaskar. Uh, uh, respected Chief Guest and Education Ad Advisor to Government of Assam, Rep. Nani Gopal Mohanji, respected keynote speaker, former judge of Guwahati High Court, Shramati Rumi Kumari Kukanji, our registrar Arup Jyoti uh, Chaudhuri ji, uh, convener of this program, Prasanjit Das, all the distinguished uh, speakers for this one day national seminar, the director of uh, different sc uh, schools of our university, uh, the participants from different parts of the state, and media friends. In, indeed, it is a great privilege for me <coughs> to join this uh, program, this one day national seminar, because uh, this is my first program after taking over the charge of uh, Vice Chancellorship of this uh, prestigious university. I was, uh, the organizers have been working day and night to make it a grand success. So, if there is any lapses in organizing this program, the discredit should be given to me. If there is success, the credit should be given to my team who have worked day and night. Uh, in fact, uh, what Professor Mahant ji said that he is not an expert in the subject, but uh, I could see that he has collected data information, practically he has presented a research paper on the theme which has given a detailed picture about uh, the fast track role of fast track court in delivering justice to women in the state of Assam. And Madam has uh, given the judicial aspect of the issue, which is perhaps, which was perhaps unknown to many of us. And I, as a uh, 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 person to deliver the presidential address, I have nothing to speak. But since I have been asked to speak, so I have to give a brief view about my own on this issue. Uh, we are born and brought up in a very unique country like India where we are talking about delivering justice to women. <coughs> but since inception, it is perhaps our country which, which has uh, given maximum justice to women, mass, maximum respect to women. We say Sitara that you know the women come first, our goddess, our women come first. We have, we say, Jadevi Sarvabhutesu Shakti Rupena Sansita, Matru Rupena Sansita, Vidya Rupena Sansita, and what not. We have given enough respect, we have been giving an enough respect to women in our country starting from the beginning of our civilization. But today whenever we are talking about justice to women, whenever this seminar is addressing this issue, then question is why, how, how it happened, where we talk about, talk of need for justice to women. 
In fact, with the passage of time, many things happened. And the theme paper which was submitted to me that I have to speak, I found many, many of the issues are stereotyped. I was just uh, asking to Professor Mohan that my impression about Assam is very unique. Because uh, Assam and Odisha have very unique culture, very similar culture in terms of food, culture, language, celebration and uh, respect to women. And whenever I was uh, told that the, uh, the women, uh, justice to women is uh, relatively less in Assam, I was wondering that how it is, women harassment is more in Assam. I was wondering that how it could happen in Assam, a state like Assam. I, I was uh, thinking deeply about it and how it could happen. It can happen because the uniqueness of Assam in terms of its uh, culture, in terms of uh, religion, in terms of its religious heterogeneity. It can, could be one of the uh, very important reasons for which it, it, it might, might be happening. But uh, if it is happening, because the data says it is not happening in the entire state, but it is happening in some districts of the state, and it is, it is an issue, not an issue which cannot be addressed. Because now perhaps for last one decade we are living in a country, in a state where the things are better controlled, better managed in comparison to previous uh, administration, previous government. And now every step is taken by the government in the state, in the country, so that women should be respected, women should be rewarded, women should be recognized. And if we, if we look at the things, the justice to women, I was just inquiring about what percentage of the employees of KK Handy State Open University are women, it is 60%, more than 60%. When the university from which I have come, I was just before coming, I was asking that what percent of women are there in uh, Indira Gandhi National Open University is 56 percent. So it is injustice. You look at it. If you look at the results of UPSC or PSC of a different state or if you look at the, any competitive examination in the state, you will find that the women are excelling, women are doing better than, better than men. Look at uh, us in front of us sitting a, uh, an IPS officer who is a woman. And whenever we talk about justice to women, there are many reasons. Because we have a national commission for women. There is a demand for national commission for men. So whenever these things are going up, if at all it, is, it has increased, so the injustice to women has uh, increased in some corner, some pockets of Assam. Now, as a state open university, it is also we have some role and responsibility to manage this issue. So, I feel that as a state open university, we should also take up this issue. We should think of how we have to sensitize the people of the state, the educated mass of the state, how we have to control this issue, how we have to re reduce these issues which, which are there in the state. We can even start a certificate or a diploma program on this issue that um, uh, the women empowerment, women harassment and all these things we can think of doing this. Besides that, all of you will be happy to know that in the last 10 days our admission has gone up like anything. We are touching 40,000 from 13 to 14,000 to we are touching 40,000. So if 40,000 people will be given a project that they have to find out what is the cause of women harassment in their respective villages or in respective towns and they should come out with what is their suggestion when we have to ask our evaluator to find out that what is the suggestion people at a different corners of the state are thinking about sorting out this issue perhaps we can come out with a solution which can recommend we can recommend to the policy makers and government they can address it at a macro level and as well as at uh, micro level to so that the problem if it is, it is going out of hand it can be controlled, number one. Number two, that uh, this seminar 
which is uh, addressed and going to be addressed by very eminent speakers from judiciary and from social society. This would the, the recommendations which they are going to give. Let us come out very transparent and objective conclusions, recommendations which we should again submit to the policy makers that what A, B, C, D like that, what the government should do as policy makers, how to sort out this problem. And I believe that the, uh, if at all, if this is the responsibility of the High Court to create fast track, uh, fast track courts and as has been told that there is derailment of fast track court from their uh, main focus of uh, giving justice to women. Let us also talk about it that how government should look at these issues and particularly what Professor Mohanji said that this is, this is a not, a not a common problem in all parts of the Assam and wherever you know he was giving data that in which district there is a maximum in which type of crimes against women. Let us focus on those issues, how we can sort out those issues, different types of crimes against women because you know we are not here to create problem, we are not here our government is not here to create problem, government is concerned to solve the, solve the problem. So we have to give appropriate suggestions, appropriate recommendations, not very subjective recommendations, very concrete suggestions, recommendations to the government through this seminar event, through our students recommendations event that how government should tackle this issue. Government is serious to tackle this issue. A very sensitive government has to tackle this issue. Let us come out with conclusion so that you know we can also as a university, as an educational institution, we can also solve, we can contribute to solve this problem. And there are many things which have to be discussed in the whole day. And I believe that this uh, seminar, the recommendation of this seminar is going to be a great help to the policy makers and government to improve the situation, to provide justice to the women of the state so that it will be a better society, the public <coughs> opinion, the public image which the state has outside the, uh, outside the state and in the country that should be, that should be improved further. So I am really thankful to Professor Mohan for give, sparing his valuable time with us and giving a very uh, thorough research uh, paper and issue which, is, which, can, which needs thorough research and uh, uh, I am also thankful to Madam for uh, sparing her valuable time with us. I am also thankful to all the speakers who, are, uh, who have spared their valuable time to share their views on this is issue in this seminar and I wish this seminar a grand success. Thank you very much. Thank you so much sir for your valuable insight on the topic. Surely, definitely, you mentioned about how our university can look into this issue for justice for women. And thank you so much for enjoying us with your words of experience. So before, move, before we conclude, uh, we would like to offer a memento to our chief guest and keynote speaker as a token of our sincere appreciation for their time and the effort they made to be with us this morning. I request our Honorable Vice-Chancellor kindly to do the honor. May I now request Srimati Rumi Kumari Fukon? May I now request Dr. Rotuti Chodhi Rejjar to deliver the vote of thanks.
Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Nani Gopal Mohanto, Mr. Justice Rumi Kumari Fukon, distinguished guest and dear participants. From the deliberations in the inaugural session, it has come to light that the right to speedy trial is the most significant dimension of the justice delivery mechanism in a democratic polity like India. But at the same time, sir, there is another dictum that is justice hurried is justice buried too. On the one hand, we have justice delayed and justice denied. And on the other hand, we have the justice hurried and justice buried. So I think the need of the hour is to strike a balance between the two so that an appropriate mechanism could be evolved for justice delivery. When we are talking in terms of providing justice in fast track courts, certainly we are not talking in terms of a mechanism that was available in Hitler's Germany or in Saddam Hussein's Iraq or in former Soviet Union. We are very much concerned about a system where justice would be delivered within the broad framework of the democratic nuances of the philosophy and the procedure of the country. We are thankful to Professor Nanigupal Mohanta, to the Honorable Vice Chancellor of this University, Professor Rajendra Kumar Das, and the keynote speaker, Mrs. Justice Rumi Kumari Fukon for setting the agenda for the coming discussions in the subsequent sessions. And finally, kind of forgiving as you are, I'm sure you won't mind any lapse on our part while arranging the event. So thank you. Thank you very much once again. With this, we have come to the successful closure of the inaugural session. Thank you all for being present in the inaugural sessions.